Hello, welcome to Seed's series on drug war and climate change. Today we learn more about Guinea Bissau, Africa's first narco state. In 2005, several packets of white powder were found washed up on the shore by the residents of a coastal village in Guinea Bissau. People assumed it to be a fertilizer and used it on their crops. Some used it as paint powder and others thought it was MSG. Soon it was investigated and found that a smuggler's vessel had capsized and packets of cocaine had washed up the coast of Guinea-Bissau. This incident marked the beginning of Guinea-Bissau's fame as a narco state. Guinea-Bissau is a tropical country on West Africa's Atlantic coast with rich wildlife and protected sanctuary of biodiversity. On the mainland, the capital Bissau holds a port which has been used as a transit point for Latin American cocaine headed for Europe. There have been allegations about the military and political influences in the progression of Guinea-Bissau becoming Africa's first narco state. It has been reported by the UN that close to 30 tons of cocaine passes through the Guinea-Bissau port every year to reach Europe. This black market has caused an increased drug use among teenagers in the resource-poor areas of Guinea-Bissau. So what does transnational drug trafficking have to do with climate change and COP26? We have Emily Ip to explain the same. President Jose Mario Vaz, known as Jamap, came to power in peaceful elections where people hope to be a new dawn. But his regime cannot stop the trafficking of drugs as actors at the highest level of state are profiting from the trade. The drug supply corruption has spread across the regions to the other West African states, such as Mali, Liberia, Senegal and Sierra Leone. This entrenched corruption allows for other safer commodities to be trafficked under the name of legality. Legally, only 20,000 cubic meters of timber was permitted to be exported per year. As timber is low priced, traffickers with military and political aid were smuggling 30,000 cubic meters of timber every 10 days. Following the widespread deforestation of the Western African country coordinated by its military, Guinea-Bissau imposed a moratorium on lodging in 2015 to stem the deconstruction of one of their chief natural resources. However, in 2020, a bill against the moratorium was passed, leading to Guinea-Bissau's tragic setback, as predicted by a report in the Global Initiative. Withdrawing the moratorium would usher in widespread consequences for Guinea-Bissau's natural resources. In the last 18 years, Guinea-Bissau has lost up to 2.7% of its total tree cover due to illicit felling. There has also been an increase in forest fires between 2018 and to 2021. A total of 21,761 high confidence fire alerts were set off. Anthony Lowenstein, journalist and author of Pills, Powder and Smoke, Inside the Bloody War on Drugs, mentions in a Seed interview how the media does not highlight the impact drug trade has on the climate change, especially in Western countries where cocaine consumption is in high demand. Drug consumers are unaware of how cocaine is sourced. He suggests regulating and legalizing drugs to protect low-income countries like Guinea-Bissau with ethical supply chains which could be created just like other food and legal drug products. Many of these countries that are home to the lungs of our planet are also homes to illegal drug trafficking. The continued prohibition of drugs results in environmental damage and a loss of legitimate political power to protect our most fragile resources.